What's up guys, I'm Salty Mike, and this is your Star Citizen Week in Review for May 15th, 2023. The 319 updates are continuously rolling in, one of which the community is not very happy with, and it's Invictus season, so naturally they teased a ship. All that and more on today's Week in Review. And as always, if this is your first week in review, this is where I take all of the official Star Citizen news each week, put it into one video, and share some of my opinions about it. I also live stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash salty mike, every day about Monday, starting at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, and yeah, you guys have been stopping by a lot, so I appreciate it. Thank you for your continued support coming over from YouTube and saying what's up on Twitch. But we do have a bit to get through this week, so let's start out with what's been going on with the 319 PTU. And starting out on Tuesday, that was our first patch, and they started with Lorville Polish, as they've been doing in most of the patches so far, even though it appears that uh, there was a number of attempted fixes put in for this patch. Uh, yeah, I'm still getting really horrible frames at Lorville. There was an FPS combat AI balance. Now, this was actually pretty cool. Uh, I saw a difference in the AI, and I'm still seeing a difference in the AI. They are a little bit less accurate, and I'm able to heal up and not die if they are shooting at me, so they're not like super accurate when they are, but they also seem to react to us a little bit differently, and in my opinion, better. It made the bunker experience better. And for gameplay, they're making Ghost Hollow more exciting, at least attempting to, and I think this fix may stick. Uh, it's really a lot of money that you can make there in a very short period of time now, so I think this uh, place is going to be really contested going forward, especially when the patch goes live. Uh, the most exciting thing for me, though, has been the ability to move mining sub-items from an inventory into your hands or on the ground. This significantly improves setting up for a mining operation. Also, the change for volatile cards Cargo has been really good on the UI, so you can actually see sort of uh, how long you have, and it's right out in the open now instead of very hidden. Uh, the timer, if you guys didn't know, has been raised from 15 minutes in previous patches to 25 minutes, so you can really choose whether or not to head to the refinery or to choose a further refinery to get maximum bonus on Quantanium, because... Yeah, you actually have time now, which is really nice. For Cortec, I'm not sure I saw any improvements here. The AI still stand on chairs, and yeah, I, I don't know about all this one. Uh, for bug fixes, the big one here that sticks out to me is Janelite is able to be sold now. And for the Wednesday patch, more performance updates on Lorville and a weird mining pass with hand mining, but this actually passed over to uh, ship-based mining as well. You raise and lower your mining laser with alt mouse wheel now and you choose how drastic the raising and lowering is with just your regular mouse wheel it seems like this was supposed to be uh the opposite but they might have made a mistake here but it's stuck throughout the entire week so not really sure what's going on there very weird one uh for bug fixes minor fixes most of the stuff but they did fix the first part of the new player experience which was getting out of your bed so that was a big one and a number of crashes were fixed as well for thursday they added the stock mining lasers to shops but i never noticed because you start with stock lasers so you wouldn't think that you would need to buy any and they balanced ship weapon and component sell prices more on that in a moment bug fixes a uh, big fix for friends list they weren't working and now they are in this patch and then for the friday patch this is where they did a significant nerf to weapon and component sales from salvage and i think that this was warranted you were making insane amounts of money from salvaging uh ships and stuff at these bigger salvage locations and on top of the fact that there's cargo there and salvage you know you're making a, a lot of money right but i don't know if it's warranted how much they've brought it down you were getting like 40 to 50 percent of the sale price from a weapon or a component and now you're getting like 15 percent and people seem to be pretty upset about it and i think that that's sort of justified they also said that this is just a temporary fix but the issue here is this is classic Star Citizen. In the PTU, things seem super awesome. You're super excited to be able to do it in live. And then they nerf it because they feel like it's going to affect their pretend economy that doesn't exist. And the problem here is that you have an opportunity to provide something fun to players that they actually feel incentivized to do. And then you take it away from them when they should be incentivized to do these things. And I think that the real issue here is that 319 is not a feature patch. 319 is an Invictus patch. 
So all of the features being added to the game are taking a back seat to the rush job that is getting this patch playable for, well, hold on, not playable, sellable for sh the ships that are going to be sold at the sale. And that's kind of the problem. Invictus La Launch Week takes precedence over the features in the game. And the features in 319 are some of the best features ever added to this game. The mining update, the depth there is insane. Salvage missions, uh, like we're actually getting missions for legitimate gameplay in the game. Crazy stuff, but they're never gonna hit the mark because it's a rush job to hit Invictus Launch Week. And that sucks. So let me know down in the comments below what you guys think about that. It's really frustrating to me that that's how it is. It is what it is. You kind of have to accept it in these uh, Invictus Launch Week kind of patches, but at the same time, it still is frustrating because this is a really exciting patch. I mean, we can review last week. I shared my excitement for the patch, and um, yeah, it, it's disappointing that it's probably not going to be as good as it potentially could be. Uh, and yeah, so let me know what you guys think about that, and let's move on to the Squadron 42 monthly report. And as always, this is the Squadron 42 monthly report. This is a Star Citizen update. So we really like to pull things out of the report that are something that could eventually affect Star Citizen. So we're gonna start out with AI features. And the main thing that I wanna take away from this section is that they're progressing with AI able to use sniper rifles. So think about these uh, derelict settlements and things that we're starting to see in the game now. And there's a lot of sniper towers, but no NPCs with snipers, right? So that'll be pretty cool. And I think that hopefully pairing that with the not super accurate NPC changes that we saw on the Tuesday patch, hopefully uh, these will be really fun to play against in the future. For vehicle features, there's a lot here, but most of it is about the MFDs and the UI. They are moving on to scanning MFDs next. So I kind of wanted to point that out because scanning is so problematic in the game right now. So maybe that's why they're leaving it to die because they have future plans for it that are currently in action. Uh, and with that in in-game markers, which would be a huge improvement to what we have right now. Uh, the ability to have markers differentiated for vehicles, mission objects, ob you know, objectives, QT destinations as radar contacts. I, I really hope that they add this change to scanning as well. They, they only showed it as part of your radar in, in, in this update. So I really hope that that's a change for UI. Uh, this section I just wanted to share with you because this is a classic Chris Roberts moment where they feel they need things to look next gen in their game that they've been working on for a decade uh, because they've been wanting it to look next gen. Do you see, do you see the problem here? <laughs> so that is the Squadron 42 update. Not a whole lot going on there for Star Citizen as expected, but usually we do have a bit more. So it was a bit light this week. Let's move on to video updates where we jump into those settlements that I was mentioning. And as I mentioned previously, Inside Star Citizen is titled Settlers of Stanton. And there isn't really much to pull out of this as it was a mostly art uh, generated kind of video, right? It was all about the stuff that they've put together as an art team. But they do share the progress that they're making on derelict settlements. And that's the big deal here is that they're settlements. Can we start with maybe one settlement last time we, we spoke? And now we're up to about 15 uh, fully fleshed settlements with a unique look, uh, narrative, and theme around them. So from all the things that we see in the video, I think I saw NPCs walking around a couple times. And I guess we, we've, I've heard this from the mission teams before that they do like to have the locations kind of dialed in. And then that would inspire sort of mission types that could be at these settlements. And I'm assuming that's what's happening here. But again, the key feature here is that these are settlements, not these little one-off outposts that are really small, not a single bunker that goes down. It's a bigger location. And I think that in the video, they're trying to sell to you that these could eventually be yours. But in reality, that is not the reality right now. And it is very much going to be a storytelling or mission-based location. And that's fine. Um, you know, the dressing of the locations is great, and I'm really looking forward to hearing how we're going to interact with them. But the team shared some new information on a ship manufacturer after this. Mirai is essentially a performance brand, and performance is quite a wide-ranging category. So 
not only do you have things like racers come under performance, but also more militarized and very obviously military focused ships as well. So while Mirai might have gotten its start in racing, that's not going to be where it stops. There's a lot of possibilities for where we can take this brand in the future. Uh, and as part of looking at this, it was clear that the Razor series was the ideal candidate to move under Mirai as a brand. Personally, I find this all a little bit weird, uh, but then they're kind of pushing the Xi'an tech part of it. What kind of excites me about Mirai as a brand is this idea we've seen this kind of blending of human and Xi'an technology already in MISC, and one of their charges is going to be taking it even farther. So the idea of the human ship designers looking at this Xi'an tech and saying, where, where can we take this? So it'll be really exciting to see what directions Mirai can take the grounding that MISC has provided them and take it even farther. I personally found a hard time finding real world examples. I thought like AMG for Mercedes or TRD for Toyota, they were more like racing versions and not really, um, you know, military side and racing side. But then uh, in the React video, I got so many kind of comments around that this is a real world thing. Think Saab with uh, their fighter planes, things like that. So I was like, okay, fair enough. But at the same time, it is clearly just you know, some marketing and lore being added so they can add more manufacturers and add more variety and uh, have things make sense for whatever they're trying to make sense for them for, which is simply to make money, right? The ships aren't really there to add gameplay. They are 100% just on the screen selling to you something that is meant to make them money, but not really selling you why you need it in the game, right? Because the game doesn't really tell you why you need it, right? The game is the thing that's supposed to tell you why you need the ship, and that isn't really a thing yet. And lastly, they give a sneak peek on the actual ship that they're trying to sell, the Mirai Fury. Now, this thing looks really cool. I really think it looks awesome. It looks like a TIE fighter. I talked a lot about the problems that I think come with the ship in uh, Answer the Call this week, so feel free to check that out if you haven't yet. But it looks fast. It looks nimble. It's got four size two guns. There's a bomber variant, apparently, of it as well. This thing's going to be an absolute pest. Uh, for Star Citizen Live this week, it was all about the new player experience. They called it a game dev, but it was more of a uh, director's cut uh you know director's commentary over it and yeah i think it's way better if you try the new player experience yourself than listen to these guys talk about it while they try it it's kind of weird but they at through during the walkthrough there were some issues that showed up and todd kind of addresses the major issue with the new player experience right now in a funny way so this window that's on the right the the, the, the one that's kind of just managing our what are those? Those are the objectives there on the right. I've got the well, those glasses are hints. on there. Yeah. The, the, the hints. Was that a new system with with the blue bar at the top? I, I don't remember seeing that before. Um, yeah. So previously, hints would be kind of at the bottom in yeah. the center, and um, we've got some um, tech which kind of makes them, you know, dresses them up a little bit, moves them up and to the right. And just below that, we've got the new uh, context, contextual hint system. Uh, I noticed that when you opened up the mobile glass, we had text on text. That's, and it, that's one of the things we need to fix. Yeah. Yeah. We, we know that um, basically with the old mobile glass, it needs to burn in hell. <laughs> And then with the, the visor, um, you know, it's it's being worked on and, and being adjusted. Now, this is personally the biggest issue that I had with the new player experience was the text. It's this this why it needs to be so holographic or so small or so not readable is something that I always found to be really weird. And then next, Jared asks a really valid question. Is this all within a green zone or will or? Because what, what happens to grief, to griefers who decide to, because all the new players are going along the yeah. same path mm -hmm. here, it basically becomes a chow line to griefers. It does. Unfortunately, it does. Attention. So, it's, it, right now, this is what we have. 
and we will continue to make it better, but we will roll this out to different landing zones. Um, obviously, from there, we'll also look at feedback on, you know, if, if people are clubbing the baby seals over and over and over again, then we will institute other um, things to block that. Um, but again, we, without, uh, I mean, we had talked about putting it on a unique uh, planet that nobody could get to, nobody could QT to. It's 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 its own space. Like we had thought about that, and, and where, but it, that wasn't. That's not our game. Yeah. And for me, the answer makes no sense at all. Uh, why are we putting players in a situation to be griefed for the sake of it not being our game? Uh, it's very odd. When you want to teach players a very complex game you would usually do it outside of the game. I would bet my, I don't know, I would bet anything on the fact that this is eventually going to end, end up in a simulator in the game and gonna be completely out of the game world that is going to affect you in a way where other players can attack you. Like just extend the armistice zone out a little bit. The, the, here's the issue that I have a problem with is he's saying it's not our game, but they haven't created the solutions to the problem in the game yet, right? I think he's looking at it maybe in a more grander vision and a more future vision, but there's no AI that can protect you. There's the turrets are a joke. Missile turrets are maybe not as much of a joke right now, but missiles are kind of a joke. And that's the problem is they need better security at these locations in order to prevent people doing it. They need measures. Like if you kill a player during a new player experience mission, you go to prison without the ability to get missions, without the ability to turn in gems to get out. You sit out and wait the whole sentence. Like proper punishments aren't there, right? That should probably be your game. That is probably what you should have been discussing. Not saying, oh, well, uh, if they get killed, they get killed. What what kind of experience are you selling to new players? That's so odd to me. And yeah, definitely leave a comment down below. I think the solution to the problem is resolving the game issues or at least acknowledging the lack of protection of new players rather than saying, well, that's just our game. And for other updates this week, we're pretty slim, uh, especially in the sneak peek area where they just showed the logo that we saw on Inside Star Citizen. So not much of a sneak peek there. The lore post was really cool. It was about the history of the Misk Prospector, uh, obviously one of my favorites. But if you read it, the end is pretty funny as to what jump started the Prospector sales simply doesn't exist in the game today. And then testing champions. Uh, we've seen this in the past. Everybody on the PTU, the people who do the most, do get rewarded and it's it's just great to see them uh supporting the people who really make this game as good as it is even though it still has its problems uh the people on the ptu reporting bugs working with the devs all that stuff really putting in the time they're the most important people here right now and i tip my hat to everybody thank you for all the hard work and much deserved all the cool ships that you guys got and guys that'll do it for this week so thank you so much for watching we can review i hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as i enjoyed making it and yeah as always leave a comment down below if i missed anything or mention anything uh your feelings on anything that we talked about today always like and if you guys really enjoyed the video and want more weeks in review subscribe and i'll catch you guys next week